in the financial industry, among stocks traded publicly, there are three sizes of company differentiated by their market capitalization, you see. Capitalization is the value of all stocks held. There are large caps, mid caps, and small caps I know too well. I couldn't tell when to buy caps or when to sell. And this is the story of how I went to NASDAQ hell. Once I tried to invest, thought I was smarter than the rest. But I couldn't pass the test I made a big mess Caps are quite overvalued Caps are quite overvalued Like a cat loves his cat food Caps are quite overvalued Twice I tried to play the stocks Try thinking out of the box, but I was washed up on the rocks. I lost my shirt and I lost my socks. Caps are quite overvalued. Caps are quite overvalued. Like a rat loves his rat brood. Caps are quite overvalued. The last time I tried to invest, I couldn't get no rest. Those caps were being such a pest. I lost my shirt, my pants, and my vest. I should have never invested. The stock market so infested. I should have left it uncontested. I lost my whole nest egg instead of trying to play the market. I should have pulled over to park it. I was such an easy target about investing. I did not know. Caps are quite overvalued. Caps are quite overvalued. Just like a cat loves his rat brood, caps are quite overvalued. Again, totally fictional, just to get to this Nivonic right there. But the best stock tip I can possibly give is check out Socially Responsible Investing, SRI. You can find all about how you can invest without destroying the planet or hurting animals or people at socialinvest.org. Hey everyone, welcome back. We get to now do a very, very fun chapter, which is incredibly useful, and it's actually pretty easy. How's, th how's that for fun? Uh, this is all about capacitors and dielectrics. Uh, so it's uh, very, very useful. There's capacitors in every device you have. In fact, right now on you, currently, you probably have about a billion capacitors, at least, uh, that are all in your cell phone. Uh, every DRAM cell, every bit of memory uh, uses a capacitor. So uh, let's go ahead and do a little bit of review from last couple chapters, uh, which is all going to come together in this chapter about capacitors. So a few important results from Gauss's Law and Electric Potential chapters. First of all, definition. A conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium when there is no net motion of charge within the conductor. So as long as uh, there's no net motion of charge, I mean charges will randomly have thermal motion anyway, but as long as there's no net motion, in other words, there's not a bunch of negative charge moving from here to over there, uh, or positive charge moving from there to there, either way it's the same thing. Uh, as long as there's no net motion of charge, uh, the conductor is deemed to be in electrostatic equilibrium. So our results from Gauss's law and potential chapters are as follows and are very important for this chapter. If a conductor is in electrostatic equilibrium, the following can be shown. First of all, within the substance of the conductor, whether solid or hollow, 
the electric field equals zero. And when I say within the substance of the conductor, like in this conductor right here, if I can get in between the little atoms, in there is where it is guaranteed to be zero if it's an electrostatic equilibrium. Uh, if you have a hollow conductor, it's also zero in there unless there's some charge within that hollow conductor. And uh, see the electric fields chapter for that. Uh, but uh, within the substance of the conductor, between those atoms, the electric field is zero, whether solid or hollow. If an isolated conductor carries a charge, all the charge has to be somewhere on the surface. If it's a hollow conductor with a, you know, you, you've placed a charge suspended inside, there can be charge on the inner surface of a hollow conductor. But if it's a solid conductor, like this one, nothing hollow about this, all the charge has to be on the outer surface. If it, it is charged, or even if it's not charged, the electric field right next to the conductor that's got surface charge density sigma on it has to be E equals sigma over epsilon naught. And the field is always perpendicular to the surface of the conductor. Now, in this case, I've got an irregularly shaped conductor. The sigma, the surface charge density, again, sigma is the charge per unit area. Sigma does not have to remain constant around this thing. Uh, it can, in fact, it'll be greater. I'm going to add a few more points. Wherever the radius of curvature is gr is less, there'll be a higher concentration of these charges there. Um, but uh, no matter where you are, the electric field at that point will be sigma over epsilon naught and will be perpendicular to the surface at that point. So that is for sure for on a conductor, E equals sigma over epsilon naught right next to the conductor. In fact, it may be equal to that even farther away from the conductor if it's a uniform field. Next, on an irregularly shaped conductor, the surface charge density is greatest where the radius of curvature is smallest. And we proved that in the electric potential chapter. See that chapter for that proof and what that all means. We do get a few more results from Gauss's law. Uh, one of the important one being, uh, with Gauss's law, we can prove that right next to an insulator with surface charge density sigma, on only one surface, which differentiates it from a conductor, if it's got sigma on one surface, like one face of a plate or something like that, the field will be sigma over two epsilon naught. So let's just use that to see if we can figure out something important for capacitors here. So right here, uh, I've got two examples where the field is sigma over two epsilon naught. Right here, I've got an insulator uh, with surface charge density sigma right here. So it's uh, sigma's here and the field in front of it right over here is, right here is sigma over two epsilon naught. Now, I've also got, completely separate, I've got a, another insulator right here, but it's got a negative surface charge density on it over here, and it's got negative sigma on it, and the field caused by that is also the same magnitude, because it's got the same magnitude of sigma right there. Uh, so it's also sigma over two epsilon naught. What's gonna happen when I put these two together like so. Still got the same sigma over here, still got the same sigma over here. What is the new field between the two? Well, by superposition, which means adding electric fields vectorally, you got to add, now they're both in the same direction. Both of, both of these fields are to the left. You've got sigma over two epsilon naught plus sigma over two epsilon naught equals what? It's sigma over epsilon naught. And notice that if we have two insulators with uh, surface charge density positive sigma and negative sigma, we can create a field of sigma over epsilon naught just like we'd have with a conductor. So this is very similar to the field created by a capacitor. In fact, it's identical. Uh, and in fact, we get the identical field sigma over epsilon naught. Uh, in fact, this will be the same if these are conductors or insulators. How is that possible? Well, you'll notice that all there's no charge over here. That just doesn't exist. There's no charge over there. There's no charge over here. Uh, so in other words, 
when these, even if these were conductors, uh, it, they would, uh, the charges would attract each other such that all the charge would appear on the inside of these plates between the two charged plates. So this is uh, the exact geometry that we get with a capacitor. So between two plates of a capacitor with the same surface charge density sigma, the field between them will be this. So that's going to be real important for us. Now, why is the field due to a conductor twice as much? Well, a conductor, like a flat plate conductor, will have charge on both the top and the bottom surfaces. So if you have sigma on top of a conductor, and that means you're going to have sigma on the bottom of a conductor. So there's having sigma on a conductor really is having twice as much charge as sigma on an insulator. The one exception to that is when you have a situation like this, when all the charges have attracted each other so that they all appear on the inside surface between these two plates. And that is exactly what happens in a capacitor, in between the plates of a capacitor. We have all the charges right there, so we still get a field of sigma over epsilon naught even with two conductors present. A lot of authors prefer to kind of gloss over that and just say, well, this is just like as if there were two insulators, and it really is. It's just that all of our charge has migrated to the inner surfaces, and the rule for conductor still works. The field is sigma over epsilon naught between those two plates.